Hello and welcome to the very first e-commerce exchange from eCycco. My name is Lewis Thompson and I will be acting as the sidekick for my good friend Matt Allen who will be keeping this whole shindig on track. Thanks Lewis. Today we're going to be talking about Black Friday and Cyber Monday which is coming up soon and how we can help online retailers make the most of the sales season. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about Black Friday which thanks to the Americans is now one of the biggest sales seasons of the year and as is traditional is going to be the first Friday after Thanksgiving which pushes it a lot later in the year than we're used to pushing Black Friday and Cyber Monday all the way into December. So I think last year uh, Shopify merchants alone took around 1.5 billion in revenue over the Black Friday Cyber Monday period. That equates to about 37 million uh, dollars per hour and the peak minute was I'm going to go for $870,000. <laughs> uh, so that's just on Shopify merchants so globally the figures are obviously a lot bigger. But we're going to be talking about everything about how you can prepare for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, what to expect during the period and directly after what you should be looking to do. Um, yeah, you mentioned one and a half billion dollars. That was Black Friday 2018. Yep. Um, which was up from just over one billion Black Friday 2017. Mm. So it's obviously still increasing massively year on year. Yeah. Um, and we're recording this kind of mid-September. So Black Friday might not necessarily be forefront of the minds of consumers and shoppers just yet. The media haven't started kind of ramping up the coverage of it mm. uh, and whatnot. However, looking at it from, a, from an e-commerce point of view, and from a re retailer perspective, um, it's not that far away. So no. people need to be getting prepared. Uh, if they're not now, then they're kind of already behind the curve. Yeah. So I think we're going to talk a little bit about what, what retailers should be doing now to kind of get their Shopify stores ready and their campaigns, their advertising campaigns, uh, their sales, etc. So yeah. what would your advice be um, at this point in the in the calendar year? So I think the first thing that they probably need to be thinking about if they haven't thought about it already is how much can they actually afford to discount by? So what's the margin of the product? How much can they discount by? And not, not just what margin they've got in the product that they need to make a profit on, mm -hmm. but what is their current cost per acquisition? So how much do they have to pay to acquire a new customer at the moment? Yep. You know, if you're, if you're discounting by 60%, but your margin is 50%, and then your cost of sale is 10%, then you're essentially going to be breaking even on every sale you make. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you need to, your margins are obviously going to be squeezed significantly because there is an expectation on Black Friday that the sales are, are high. But you're going to get a significantly more volume over the period. So you don't need to make as much because you're going to be selling a lot more individual products. So figure out what your current cost per acquisition is, uh, your current cost of sale, what your margin is on a product and, and actually discuss what your discount can afford to be and to make it compelling but still still leave margin in there for you. If you haven't decided that, then there's nothing else you can do after that point. You need to figure out what, what you can afford to discount by and where you're going to go from there. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that kind of ironed out, then you need to start thinking about how you're going to present that to users. So m most, most brands, even the bigger brands, tend to leave this stuff to the last minute, especially with digital because it's so fast moving. You know, with print, for example, they would have been thinking about Christmas in February, mm -hmm. but with digital, it's a lot later in a lot later in the year. So once you've got your offer and you you feel like that's a compelling offer and that's what you're going to put out to users and you know there's going to be margin in there, uh, with the understanding that you're going to see some of your stats skewed, things like cost per acquisition are going to shift slightly over just because shopping behaviour changes. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that, you can then start to think about what kind of campaigns or what kind of collateral that you need to pull together to actually start to present that to, to users or customers on the front end. You mentioned shopping behaviour there. Um, so it's, it's not really a surprising stat these days that um, a lot of people are buying on their mobile devices mm -hmm. as opposed to on desktop. Um, and last Black Friday, that, that weekend, it was about 66% of people purchased through mobile devices. Yeah. Um, so what's your take on preparing, ensuring that you're prepared from a mobile point of view. Are retailers doing everything they, they should be doing in order to make it as easy as possible for people to buy through their mobiles? And if, if they're not considering that, 
what should they be doing in order to make that experience as good as possible for the customer and uh, to increase the likelihood of a sale. I personally think that the question shouldn't necessarily be how do I prepare for mobile sales for Black Friday? It should be have you considered mobile as, as the major selling point of your website, your e-commerce store throughout the whole year? Because if you're not prepared for mobile for Black Friday, Black Friday is the least of your worries really. Mm -hmm. If your mobile experience is poor, then that's going to be affecting sales across the rest of the year. Never You're mind saying that, sh that should just be your bread and butter anyway? And yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. if, if you can assume that, that a minimum of 50% of your traffic is going to be from mobile. Uh, depending on what kind of item you've, you're selling, mm -hmm. your conversion rate might shift. So, for example, generally a considered purchase, i.e. a purchase that's, that's more expensive, uh, those conversions tend to be much more likely to happen on desktop. Mm -hmm. Or we see this, you see this behaviour where people flip between multiple devices. So they might start their kind of research on a mobile, or even get to the point where they've added to cart, or, or shared a product from their mobile, and then they actually complete the purchase on desktop. There's still there's still that behaviour where people feel more comfortable completing a purchase online on their desktop. Mm. Almost like it's easier to consume the information on a, on a desktop. But that might be a testament to, to the, the mobile experience on a site if they're if they're struggling to make that decision yep. on the mobile. You know, I would say under that kind of £30 contactless checkout style purchase, yep. that's much more likely to happen purely on mobile rather than a flip between multiple devices, even on, even on Black Friday, but throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the, the point about how do you prepare for Black Fro Friday and the fact that, that mobile purchases made up 66%, it's likely to be very similar for the next year. Yep. You should really be preparing that for that the whole year. If if sixty six percent of purchases happened on on mobile on Black Friday, it's, it's not going to be dissimilar. Rest of the year. For the rest of the year. Sure. So if if your mobile experience is poor, and you're probably going to be missing out on as much revenue as you'd make in Black Friday across the rest of the year, mm -hmm. just by having poor mobile experience, making it difficult for people to buy. Yep. Okay. Um, we're talking about impulse versus considered purchase. Mm. I, I think it's. I'm probably fair to say that around this time of year, people are more receptive to the sales and the yeah. um, kind of more in, in the mode to buy. Mm. But I suppose the flip side is that there are more people advertising, more people putting the sales on, of mm. course. So talking again specifically about preparing for Black Friday, um, how do you think, what are your tips for, for retailers to kind of rise above that noise of their competitors? and, and engage the attention of the, of the customers when there's so much, so much sales going on? It's, re it's a really, really difficult one because I, essentially, during any sale, well, throughout the whole year in e-commerce, the majority of people are competing with the likes of Amazon, which has yeah. much more buying power, much more advertising power, a much larger user base. So if your product is, is generic in the sense that it can be bought off Amazon or maybe you're even selling on Amazon yourself, you're going to have a lot of difficulty. I think in order to, to rise above other people, potentially having a more compelling offer is, is obviously going to be key there. The consistency of your messaging and, and where that messaging appears, so are you appearing on search and social uh, through email? I think the best place to start is probably with your existing user base. Mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't Acquiring new customers in that period is going, to be, is going to be much more difficult. So if you start with your existing user base and talk to them early about what your Black Friday offers are going to be, so you're not just firing offers at them on the day where they've got to consider 20 other brands or, or, or 20 other products, <coughs> and they've got to prioritise those purchases and they have a specific budget that they can spend for Black Friday, get to them early, help them to make that decision before Black Friday happens. So think about what your deals are going to be across the board. Present those to users very early. Give them the option to be reminded about those deals on, you know, when, they, when they go live. That's, that's going to be a good start is with mm -hmm. your own user base. So trying to build up that user base in the weeks leading up to Black Friday where the noise isn't, isn't so heavy and then utilising that user base during that period. Aside from that, it's, it's about how much you're willing to ramp up your advertising efforts. You know, how much are you willing to compete on the likes of paid search and paid social. 
you know, you can significantly increase your budgets and your bids to, to outrank your competitors, but if you're selling the same products as someone else, there is going to be consideration there. So mm -hmm. if, if you're, it's all about finance at this point. So if your yep. deal is not as good uh, and you're trying to acquire a new customer, it's going to be very difficult for you because it's all price sensitive. Uh, if, if you have the same deal, but someone else is giving added value, so they're giving a, you know, a, a free gift or a free product on top of, on mm -hmm. top of what the discount is, then you're going to lose out. So it's very, very competitive. So you need to be ever present and your deal needs to be very good during Black Friday, otherwise you're going to be lost in the noise. Okay. Um, if you're selling your products on Amazon, I would, I would, maybe, I would maybe look at driving, driving traffic through there because the ease of checkout, the success rate is going to be much higher. The margins aren't going to be as good for you, but you, you're going to end up competing with yourself on another platform. So. That's really good advice. So getting, getting your, your offers and your deals out there in as far as in advance as possible mm -hmm. to kind of get ahead of your competitors um, and engage with your audience earlier. Mm. And then once you've got them to your site, um, I think the stat for abandoned carts is something like 69%. Mm -hmm. So it's still a, a, a massive opportunity to, to recapture people then who have almost purchased or yeah. you know, distracted by the other offers that are out there. So what, what would you have to say about kind of that? You've, you've nearly got them you've got them onto the site, but they haven't quite bought off you. Yeah. What would your approach be to try and entice them back and, and, and close that deal? There's a whole load of things you could do. One of the things that I want to touch on is worth mentioning is that kind of period leading up to Black Friday. You mentioned about people adding to cart and potentially they'll do that before Black Friday, especially if you presented them with offers. Yeah. What you're probably going to find is that sales may dip if people know a Black Friday offer is coming, what the data starts to show us now is that people are more and more willing to wait for the sale period to get the items that they want. You know, if, if you're buying, if you're in the process or you know you're gonna to need to buy a new TV or you want to buy a new TV and you're three months away from Black Friday, people, are, people will wait that period. Um, so I think there's a couple of things that you can do prior to the start when, yeah. you, when you're starting to present those offers. Um, allowing people to save their items for later, so wish lists, um, allowing people to get notified about when a product is going to go on offer if you are presenting a Black Friday offer to them. Uh -huh. So there's all that pre-stuff that you can do that leads into remarketing. If somebody adds something to their wish list, it's you know, a, a slightly less of a commitment than adding to cart, but it's still An a signal. Yeah. yeah, exactly, a signal that they, that they potentially want to buy the item. Um, and if they know it's going to be going on sale, then allow them to be reminded about when that thing is going to be discounted. And that leads into the remarketing or, or retargeting conversation. Mm -hmm. So you have all this, you have all this build up data to Black Friday where you've been sending traffic to the site, people have been um, potentially adding to cart, adding to wish list, viewing specific products, um, Google Analytics, paid search, social, email, a whole range of places that you can start to talk to people about what they've been doing previously on your site and, and what the next action is they should take. So email is the obvious one, so yes, abandoned cart. Um, abandoned cart emails are really, really effective. What most people tend to do and what like a platform like Shopify will give you out of the basket is a single abandoned cart email at a set time period. Mm -hmm. So it would be, you know, you can choose a single abandoned cart email and you can either send it 24 hours after adding to cart six hours, eight hours, whatever those time periods are. Uh, what I would do personally is extend, extend those out over three or four emails potentially over a time period. Mm -hmm. um, so dep depending on why people abandon cart, you can never be 100% sure, but you, you can be sure that people abandon carts for different reasons. So it might be that uh, I have the full intention of buying a product, but realized that dinner was burning and I just had to run off and do something. Yeah. In which case, all I need is a little nudge. Um, I may have abandoned the car or just use it as a safe for later functionality, in which case, you know, again, it might just be a little nudge. Some people are waiting for an incentive to mm -hmm. buy. There's lots of different reasons why people abandon car and you should, you should separate your communications accordingly. I think during the Black Friday period, all those timings might change and become truncated because you've got a period of three or four days where you have the opportunity to get a sale 
within you know within that offer period. Mm -hmm. So where you might usually do an abandoned cart email at an hour a day and a week, you might adjust that to say an hour a day and two days, for example, sure. where it's very specific abandoned cart emails for Prime yeah. uh, for for Black Friday deals. Uh, in terms of standard remarketing, you should be doing it across email, social remarketing. You have something uh, in paid search called remarketing lists for search ads, where essentially if somebody has shown specific behavior on your site, you really upweight your bids on search for specific terms. Okay. So you're much more likely to capture that customer at the time. Um, so essentially it's about being a, a lot more aggressive with your remarketing activity because the time period is truncated. You don't really have the time to convert people over a period. Mm -hmm. You're already in sale, so you don't really need to worry too much about incentives. Yep. You know, if you're going to incentivize an abandoned cart, you know, if it's the final point, um, I think you, you talk more specifically about the, the time restrictions on the sale. And if you are going to offer something as an incentive, it should be an added value mm -hmm. rather than more of a discount. You know, something that is fairly low cost to the company, but high impact for the user. Um, so it's, it's the same principles that you use for marketing across the rest of the year. I think nothing revolutionary changes during Black Friday in terms of marketing. There is no silver bullet. It's the same principles that you use. Yeah. It's just over a truncated time period and the incentives already exist there for you. You don't have to build them into to your into your remarketing funnels. Okay. That's interesting you mentioned there about customers becoming more savvy mm -hmm. as well. Um, so what about a different approach? Um, and talking about retailers who perhaps don't want to be involved in Black Friday, or is there another way that you can approach it aside from doing a discount or a sale? So Black Friday isn't right for everyone. Not, not every brand is going to want a discount. Uh, I had a conversation with someone recently where they said they, they, they offer a fair price or what they see as a fair price year round. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, they look at discounting as more damaging to the brand than it is you know, adding value to the consumer. So I would look at it as an opportunity to create content. For your existing users, it's about explaining to them the kind of mission of the company and why you do what you do and why the prices are what they are. And, mm -hmm. you know, is it because we can't offer a lower price because of the quality of the, the product that we produce and here's all the people that get paid during the process and this is the yeah. process we have to go through to create the product. This is why it is the price it is. So if you're creating content around that, with your existing customer code base, you can build up more of a rapport, they can buy into you more as a brand and, and you build that loyalty with them because they see you as a fair operator, someone sure. who's giving them the best that they can possibly get already. In terms of acquiring new customers, I suppose there's, there's gonna be some customers you're never gonna get because they, are, they, they put themselves in the midst of the sale in order to get the best deal. Mm -hmm. This is why people fight over tellies and Tesco's. It's, because they're just desperate to get the best deal regardless of what's going on. They don't, they don't care whether you're uh, producing ethically made TVs and, and paying people a fair wage. Mm. They just want the cheapest TV. But there are going to be a segment of customers that are, that are interested in, in the higher quality, but maybe Black Friday segment isn't the best time for you to be talking about that certainly a good time for you to, to increase rapport with your current customer base and there may be an acquisition strategy there for you to talk to people who are anti the machine of, of Black Friday Cyber Monday and maybe yeah. you will acquire them if you hit them at the right time. I think it certainly bears some, some explaining as to why you're not taking part and it's, it's good to have a position mm -hmm. and it's not a, never a bad thing I don't think in, in advertising to be polarising to create a situation where some people defend you to the end of the earth because of the stance that you've taken against this thing and some people can't believe that you're not taking part in Black Friday. Uh -huh. That polarisation and that conversation is, is great. Yeah. It, you know, it just creates more awareness about what you're doing and, and where you are and what kind of brand you are. So, yeah, if you don't want to take part, absolutely don't do that. But don't try and compete with people on the same product in terms of acquiring new customers when they're offering a discount. You'll be you'll be pissing money up the wall, um, and you know where you can just try to build up the loyalty with your your existing customer base and 
take the stance that you want to take and, and maintain that. Yeah. And on, on the subject of loyalty and kind of that, that trust that you have with your customers, mm. um, in the, such a competitive time, um, you've, you've said that price might be the differentiator for some people, yeah. but also when they're considering different retailers to buy from, there mm. might be a trust element there. Have you got any tips on how people could um, ramp up the, the trust element on their site to, to uh, kind of swing the customers their way over, over a competitor? If we're talking trust as opposed to, to loyalty, yeah. I think they're Separate slightly things. different things. Yeah. Um, the trust element is it's the same kind, kind of confidence boosters that you'd use throughout the rest of the year to encourage people to buy with you over, over anyone else. These kind of pieces of social, social proof that you, you generally dot around your site could be, you know, all things being equal, price being equal, product being equal, you know, how do you separate? Mm -hmm. not, I'm not talking about branding in generally and loyalty because that's it's a whole different conversation the, and, and that's built up over a period of time. Yep. If we're talking about you know, I discover two brands that are selling the same product uh, at the same price and they're both new to me, I don't have any particular allegiance to either brand, then there's certain elements that start to come into play. So, you know, do they display reviews on the site? Is the site secure? Does it seem uh, easy to use? All of these things will come into play. So these, this social proof and, you know, do they have presence on social media? All of these things kind of build a case as to whether a, whether a site is trustworthy or whether you should buy from them. Mm -hmm. There is still, I mean, it's changing, but there is still a reluctance to buy from people online that you haven't heard of or you don't know if you don't have any yeah. awareness of them. Mm -hmm. You know, to put your credit card details into a site and uh, to make a purchase is, is a risk. Mm -hmm. This is why people so easily jump to Amazon, even if Amazon isn't cheaper. Sometimes it's that it's trusted like, name. Yeah, yeah. I know I can get it delivered. If there's an issue, it's Amazon. They'll give me my money back. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to have any issues with this. So, if if all things are be if all things are equal, then each element starts to play its part. Reviews, site security. Um, you know, people have been told to look for the lock in the top left hand corner. Yeah. Which, you know, doesn't necessarily mean anything to them, but it's you know these are the things that people are told to look for. Um, different payment methods, you know, ease of checkout, all of these things will come into play. And so it's worth considering having those things on your site and having that presence on social media and using reviews to your advantage. For example, if someone adds the cart during this period and then abandons cart, yeah. then you can hit them with remarketing immediately on social media and maybe use previous user reviews as, as the kind of headline of, of those ads mm -hmm. to, to encourage that trust and display the products that they looked at previously and, and try and drive them back into the site. So, yeah, the reason I, the reason I've tried to separate trust and loyalty is because I think they're two different, they're, they're, they're very separate. The trust is, that, you know, am I willing to put my car details in and make this purchase and give these people my money? Of course, yeah. And trust that they'll send me the product. I think loyalty is a whole different conversation around am I, am I going to maintain my relationship with this brand over another brand yep. based purely on price? And I think that comes down to lots of factors that happen throughout your relationship with the brand as to whether you will move to a different brand based on individual factors. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, if, if, you if you initially sell to someone purely based on price, then when it comes down to it, if someone sells it cheaper, they will, they will buy the other product, they will yeah. move to another product when it comes to, uh, when it comes to repurchasing. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you sell on more than that, if you sell on a relationship or you sell on a set of principles or you you sell on this a, a core mission that resonates with your users, then it, it's much less likely that they're going to move to another brand just because the price has changed. Sure. This is why people will buy, you know, an Apple phone over an Android phone, and the Apple users will demand that the, the Apple phone is the best tech, it's the best looking, and it's the easiest to use. And the Android users will laugh mm -hmm. because they've got the same tech essentially yeah. for half the price. Both of those things, you know, neither is wrong. They're kind of, it's, it's all down to the, what you buy into as an individual. Yep. You know, an Apple user might buy into status and looks and uh, popularity over an Android user who's buying into, you know, a perceived open source community and affordable tech for everyone 
and the ability to do what they want with their phone as opposed to being in a locked-in system. And are you an Android or an Apple guy? Obviously an Apple guy. At the status? Yeah, they're, yeah. Well, they're just better phones. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's, that's, that's the whole conversation. Yeah, right? yeah. We have this in the office all the time, which is yeah. better. Um, it really doesn't matter to me. I, I buy Apple phones now because I'm in their ecosystem and uh -huh. you know, that's what I'm used to, is, is an emotional decision. Mm -hmm. but I think that's worth consideration through Black Friday and, and across you know, across the whole year really, across your whole sales year, is that purchases, generally speaking, aren't made based on logical decisions. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, they're made on a whole range of different decisions, uh, one of which might be price, but it's much more of an emotional, emotional decision than people will tell you. Sure. And the difficulty with that argument is that it's, it's significantly harder to prove because people struggle to explain why they made one purchase over another. So they will reference things like features and functionality and price, um, but they won't mention things like, I just, you know, I relate it to that brand the more. The less tangible or, things. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think the less tangible things are massively important. Yep. And that, that's often lost when you're talking very tactically. Mm -hmm. Obviously with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's, it's, it's very, very tactical. It's about how low can we get the price? How many more customers can we acquire? What, what volume of orders can we get through? Yeah. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't change who you are at the core of your brand. If you mm -hmm. decide to discount, that's fine. Uh, just, you know, I think if you can do that ethically and you can put it in front of people and, and you can, you know, continue to offer them value for the rest of the year also, that's a better position to be in than just trying to make a quick book. Mm. Then, with that in mind though, I suppose a lot of people will after the sales season, we'll look back over the performance of what they've done mm -hmm. um, and assess how it's gone and maybe consider what they'll do next time. Mm -hmm. Have you got any, any tips for how they could reflect on that um, and how they could analyse whether it's been a success or not beyond just have they made more money? Yeah, I th there's, there's lots of things. Again, some of the same statistics that you should be looking at across the rest of the year, which I know some, a lot of people still don't do this, even big brands we see uh, still don't do this. You should be looking at the cost it was to acquire each customer, what your actual return on investment was. Uh, what a lot of agencies will do is they'll give you your return on your ad spend, which is a much more attractive figure generally. Mm -hmm. So you spent this much and you made this much. But you know, what's your true return on investment? How much did you pay the agency? Um, how much was your ad spend? What was your cost to produce the product? What's left over after that? What's left over after all your overheads? Was, was it profitable for you to do Black Friday? Would you have been better off or worse off? Mm -hmm. you know, if, if at the end of Black Friday you spent more money than you made, you, you, you would have been better off not doing Black Friday. Yeah. You know, it's not always a good thing to do and that might, be, that might be the thing that makes you make the decision right next year we're not going to do Black Friday or actually we're going to discount less or we're going to you know, do Black Friday, but we're going to cut our advertising spend down. There's lots of considerations to make. But it's the same statistics you should always be looking at. There are more less tangible things like how, how, you know, how much was your brand mentioned? What was the sentiment of the brand mentions? Was it positive sentiment? Was it negative sentiment? Uh, you know, how, how big was the dip you saw after Black Friday? Did you manage to maintain a general higher traffic level or conversion rate level after Black Friday. Mm -hmm. There's all, all of the standard e-commerce stats, conversion rate, traffic, time on site, uh, bounce rate, uh, conversion rate, ev everything you can think of standard yeah. e-commerce. You should separate Black Friday as, as a little segment mm -hmm. uh, and do a year on year comparison if you can. Yep. Um, but most importantly, did you come out of it profitable in the end? Uh, because there's, there's, there's potentially going to be a lot more uplifting costs, even more than just ad spend. You know, if, you, if you're a company where you, you, you're planning on seeing a, a significant uplift during Black Friday, there's other things to consider, like are you going to have to increase staffing for, uh, you know, are you shipping your own goods? Do, can your warehouse cope with the amount of orders? Do you have enough customer service staff yep. to man live chat, to man phone lines? Uh, what happens after Black Friday? If you, know, if you don't think about the resourcing you need in your warehouse and you don't deliver all the things that you said you were going to deliver in the time you said you were going to deliver them, yeah. someone better be sat in a chair waiting to pick up the phone because you're going to get phone calls, you're going to get emails, there's going to be a whole influx of customer service issues. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you can't see the customer journey as stopping, even during Black Friday, but across the whole year, you can't see the customer journey stopping at a purchase. You have to think about what happens after that. How, how do you engage with customers after that? How do you change customers from being just a customer into an advocate of the brand, someone who will go out and evangelize about the, the products that you create or the work that you do? You know, that, that is probably the bit that people don't think about is, you know, we always say selling so many products that you have to get more staff is a good problem to have, but it is still a problem. Yeah. You know, you need to be able to ship those products. Uh -huh. The expectation of users now is this on-demand expectation. It's Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you can't get this to me next day or within two days, I'm going to be frustrated. Sure. But that's, that's the expectation of users now. So as an independent retailer, it's much more difficult because you don't have the buying power of Amazon to, to create a whole logistics network. Mm. Uh, I think Shopify is starting to help with this with their kind of US um, distribution network, which will, yeah. you know, will start to help compete, independent retailers compete with Amazon on that level. But I think for now, take into, think, into consideration the increase in work that's going to happen if you make more sales and potentially the increase in staff mm -hmm. uh, and inevitably the increase in customer service queries after the fact and the fact that if you have a really good Black Friday and you sell lots of product but most of them don't arrive, that the sentiment towards your brand is going to switch from positive to negative very, very quickly, mm -hmm. especially if, as, as people are more often than not doing, especially when Black Friday is this late in the year, they're buying for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, not just buying as an impulse buy, they're buying gifts because they think they can get a better deal at that point. When you start not delivering on the things that are supposed to be for Christmas presents, people people get very, very angry very, very quickly. Uh, so yeah, consider all those things and what happens after you've made the sale, mm -hmm. not just what's happening during the sale period. You've got to do all the logistics work and the customer service work after the fact. And that's going to be not just over that three-day weekend, but over a whole period of time after that. I was just wondering... Yeah. Uh, do you know why it's called Black Friday? I think it's called Black Friday because that is the point in the year at which retailers go into the black. Ah, okay. I thought it was because it's the, the dark night of the soul for people fighting <laughs> over tellies and Tesco's. And, you know, it might be that as well. Uh, <laughs> kind of Stepford wife <laughs> suddenly becomes crazy. <laughs> What's Google saying? Google. And so it's, it's about the violence and traffic accidents. So you've asked the question to which... I got the answer wrong. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's one for the outtakes. <laughs> it's going right in the main, in the main <laughs> thing. That's going to be the intro. So I suppose, just as a, as a brief conclusion, it's there is no magic thing that happens in Black Friday that where suddenly you see loads of influx in sales and, and you don't really have to... You know, you don't really have to do anything, you just sit back. It's, it's the same principles. So you're doing the same thing you should be doing year round, but just in a more... It's in a more in, enhanced way, in yeah. a more truncated way, potentially. You know? I suppose you've got more of um, a predictable consumer behaviour at that time. Perhaps, you know, yeah. you know that the Black Friday sales are going to peak at lunchtime, mm -hmm. maybe, and you know that Cyber Monday yeah. might be 8pm for last minute sales. So you can kind of bear that in mind with what you're doing. But essentially what you're saying is apply the same principles you would mm -hmm. normally do. Yeah. Just bear in mind the sales. So, yeah, so try not to be reactive, which is the mistake most people make in digital marketing generally, is that they, they're doing things on the fly and they're not planning things. Yeah. Um, so start as early as you can in terms of planning. Figure out what you can afford to discount by, by how much, uh, and still remain profitable, taking into account all of the other overheads like cost per acquisition, uh, media spend, all of the things that you consider the rest of the year round. Uh, tell people about the deals earlier than on the day of Black Friday, prepare them for what deals are coming, get people to show their interest, sign up, build that data up on site, uh, present people with the, detail, the deals on the day, remarket to people aggressively, uh, I mean aggressively in, in the nicest way, I just mean <laughs> remarket to people as quickly as you can because of the truncated time period yep. about the things that they've shown an interest in. Prepare for the, the increase in order volume, so your, whatever your fulfillment solution is, 
make sure that is staffed up and prepared to ship stuff out as quickly as possible. You know, the expectation of people is that things, things arrive very quickly. They don't care whether it's 50% off. Their expectation is that, that everything else remains the same. They just pay less money. And then prepare for the fact that customer service inquiries and uh, talk around the brand across a whole multitude of platforms is going to be increased. Hopefully that's in a positive way. Uh, but prepare for the fact that things might go, might go awry and, and you, you have some negative chatter around the brand and you have some customer service issues, both publicly on social media and, and privately through your, whatever your customer service hub is. And then wherever you can, try to maintain as much of that kind of increase in awareness and traffic that you get through targeted advertising to people who, who came onto the site. Mm -hmm. uh, there's potential for you know, increased revenue. And I think this late in the year, prepare for the fact that Black Friday may take a chunk of your Christmas sales too. Sure. So you need to think about, think about what the impact is there and prepare for the fact that people are gonna be shopping for Christmas. Great, thank I you think very that's much. everything. That's great, thank you. Thanks, Matt.